this video, we're going to delve back into the conspiracy theory category, and this is going to be a throwback video. Uh, I've actually done this one before, and I'm going to be rehashing it here on this channel. This is going to be the top 10 least likely to most likely end of the world scenarios. <laughs> Okay guys, welcome back. So just to let you know, I'm not actually going to be doing this myself right here and right now. I'm going to be re-uploading uh, one of my older videos and kind of touching it up a little bit. So just so you know ahead of time, uh, this video I might mention some events that happened back in October or September, and I may be citing them as recent when at this point, while they're still recent, they're not all that, uh, you know, that recent, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Uh, but basically, I'm going to, like I said, re-upload this add some pictures to it, and then let you guys listen to it. It's my least likely to most likely uh, end of the world scenarios, and uh, I'm gonna let that video run. So just keep in mind, this is an older video. I did this video back, I believe, in October. So if you hear anything or something I'm referring to, just take, just keep that in mind. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm gonna go over my top 10 end of the world scenarios from least likely to most likely that could happen within the next 20 years. So here we go. So at number 10, Nibiru. Nibiru. If you haven't heard of Nibiru, Nibiru is the theory that there is a rogue planet that has a large orbit and is in right now, and this changes every couple of years, uh, which is on a collision course with Earth. In other words, this planet is at some point going to come into course with Earth and smash right into it. And boom, goodbye. We're all gone. We're smashed. We're all floating through space. Uh, if you've ever seen the movie Melancholia with uh, uh, Kristen Dunst and Kiefer Sutherland, uh, it's an indie film, and that's pretty much what the story's about. Uh, well, the story is it, its kind of one of those double things. Like, Melancholia is the name of the rogue planet in that movie, and basically, while Kristen Dunst's character is getting married and living her life, this... This rogue planet is coming close to Earth. It's actually a pretty decent movie, and there's a nude scene with Kristen Dunst, and boy, she's got a rack. I never knew she had a rack that big. So check it out. If you have Amazon Prime, it's actually on there for free. That's how I saw it. So so Nibiru is... <laughs> this this rogue planet was supposed to be hitting us within the last 10 years. I mean, every time it's supposed to hit us and it never does, then the people who believe in this, and you'd be surprised how many people believe in this scenario, uh, they come back and they say, oh, this is why, and... It'll hit three years from now, and so on and so forth. It even uh, was supposed to hit during the whole 2012 thing. So uh, that is number 10 on my list. Um, and the thing of it is, if, if we did have a rogue planet that had an orbit that was dead set on hitting us at some point, I think if it was coming close, we would see it. We would see it. So uh, that's number 10, and uh, we'll scratch that one off. Okay, so number 9, the polar shift. This was supposed to occur during the whole 2012... Uh, phenomenon, and it's still a very popular topic. A lot of people think that uh, pole shift will occur in such a way that uh, either, I've heard many different things, um, global catastrophe with massive earthquakes, volcano eruptions, tectonic plates shifting, and then I've even heard as much as people losing their, almost like a worldwide, <laughs> um, excuse me, worldwide uh, vertigo. You know, you lose your balance, you fall to the ground, Everything looks like it's spinning. Uh, now, the thing about polar shift is polar shift has happened before, and polar shift can occur, but it's, an act it's actually a very slow process uh, from what I've read. Who knows what the truth is? People, just, But according to NASA, uh, it, it has happened before. It is a fact, but it's not something that happens over a span of 48 hours. It happens over a course of like three or 4,000 years. Uh, we barely feel it, and you could actually go... Uh, I can't remember the website, but there was a website that shows you uh, the difference of the equator within the last couple of years or how even an earthquake can kind of shift the pole a little bit. So polar shift is my number nine, uh, on least likely. So uh, at number eight, we have a black hole created by the Hadron Collider. So the Hadron Collider is this massive, massive machine. I think it's in Switzerland. Uh, Stephen Hawking, I think, was one of the many creators of this thing. And basically, it's a machine to replicate and measure particle collision and energy 
and just and study particle theories and stuff like that. So anyway, when it first was created, a lot of people were scared because they believed that by tampering with uh, certain elements of the universe and how they work, that it was the potential for a black hole to develop and suck the Earth into it. So I don't mean to laugh. I mean, I, I guess something like that could happen. I don't want to ever say, with the exception of, of Nibiru, <laughs> I don't ever want to say that anything can't happen. Uh, I think it's, in my opinion, remote, but if they are messing with particles that actually exist in space, if they're either recreating them or replicating them and colliding them, I guess there's a chance. I don't know. I'm not a scientist, and uh, you know, while I did pretty good in my physics class, my physics doesn't go that deep. So, so that's number eight. Number seven, solar flares. So the reason I have this pretty high up um, is because we get hit by solar flares all the time, and even according to NASA and some other uh, factual articles you can read online, uh, just find the right sources. So everybody has their opinion, but there are factual articles out there that you can read. NASA is a good source of information. Um, so solar flares, I mean, we get hit with them all the time. It is fact that if we got hit by a massive solar flare that could not only knock out, you know, cell phone power or cell phone connectivity, but could even knock out the grid, then, yeah, you have a doomsday scenario because we're so reliant on power as, as a, not only our country but the world that if we were to lose power or the grid were to drop, we, we'd pretty much be done because a lot of us now are not trained to survive in the wild. We, we pretty much... There are some people out there who do who, who are, but we would pretty much most of us probably perish without power because we're too reliant on it. So, uh, but it's it's slim. It's slim because it's all about timing. That flare would have to unleash at the right time in the right direction. So, but it is possible, just highly unlikely according to NASA. Um, alien invasion. Um, yeah, it's hard to think that this is more likely than a solar flare, but um, I have it at number six because. Um, I do believe in, in aliens. I do believe that there are other um, creatures in the universe. I, I'm not too arrogant to think that we're the only ones in the... When you consider the sheer size of the universe, I don't... I'm not arrogant enough of a human to believe that A, we're the only ones that exist, and B, that if we are, if there are others out there, that we have better technology. Um, I think it's safe to say while most UFO encounters or alien stories or whatever are full of shit, um, there are some special case, special cases that are legitimate or hard to explain. So, um, you know, I think this is something when you consider, and maybe we'll get into this in another video one day, um, but there's some really, really good um, content and research uh, regarding certain cases that are pretty, are pretty uh, staggering if you haven't seen them. So but we'll get into that one day in another video in this subject category. So uh, number five, Super Volcano. This is actually very possible. Um, when you consider that volcanoes are dormant, they can burst at any time. It's just, it's not a matter of um, if, it's a matter of when. And, you know, a good, a good um, there's quite a few of them around the world, but we have one in this country, Yellowstone, is a super volcano. Um, and the reason these are, that's a doomsday scenario, if you don't know about super volcanoes, a super volcano is a much larger, much more massive volcano than what you would see like in Hawaii. And when these volcanoes erupt, their ash, they erupt with such power and with such ferocity that the ashes could actually, over time, cover the planet. And so when you get something like that, you get almost a nuclear winter. Uh, you know, you get no sunlight, so your ecosystem starts to get destroyed. Uh, wildlife starts to get destroyed. And then eventually us as humans, because the things that we feed off of, plants and animals, would cease to exist. Um, so number four is near-Earth object asteroids, comets, and we don't really even have to go into too much detail with that because everyone knows by now that that's a, that's a Russian roulette. That can happen at any given moment. So it's it's definitely more likely than the other ones. Um, bioterrorism, that's a big topic. Uh, you know, when you consider all these countries who, who flirt with the idea of using um, bioterror, excuse me, yeah, bioterror, and then you consider what happened in Syria recently, um, obviously, that's a very, very risky, risky thing. So go out and get your gas mask. You know what I mean? Uh, number two, nuclear war. Everybody's got nukes. We got nukes. Russia's got nukes. Iran's got nukes. Uh, it was believed that Iraq had nukes, but that proved to be, you know, but that was back in the day. Uh, obviously, everybody knows North Korea's working on nukes. China's probably got them. Um, Israel's got them. So that is simple. That's as much as a push of the button. And finally, number one, economic collapse. Uh, we're probably on the verge of that right now. Uh, when you consider the government shutdown, when you consider that every time they raise the debt ceiling, uh, the value of the dollar goes down, 
Um, basically, once America loses control of the oil, or if they, it, or once the oil runs out, because it will, it's not that stuff's not replenishable. It'll go eventually. And if we continue selling our debt to other countries, in particular China, pretty much, pretty soon, we're going to be broke. I mean, we're broke now. We have, I was watching today, seventeen trillion dollars in debt. So you know, I think economic collapse is probably the most likely one to happen within the next twenty years, if not sooner, because I mean, we're already kind of dealing with that right now. Um, things are slow out there. It's you know, there's still a kind of recession, and now these guys are fighting over dumb stuff, Obamacare and the government shutdown. There's eight hundred thousand people out of work. Uh, my brother-in-law, who's in the military, is he also works for the VA. He's not getting paid now, and it's 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 a bad deal. So. Um, you know, guys, start backing up some of your stuff. Um, if we do go through an economic collapse, the first thing you're going to deal with is inflation. So my suggestion to you would be start stockpiling a little bit of food um, and uh, maybe get yourself a little uh, weapon in case people riot. I have a gun, so <laughs> I don't play. Um, but that's it. That's my top ten doomsday slash uh, end of the world, I guess, scenarios that are likely to happen in the next 20 years, from least likely to most. Um Obviously, the top three, um, economic collapse, nuclear war, bioterror, are probably the three ones that are, unfortunately, closer to reality than the rest of the ones on the list. So, But, you know, so far, we've managed to avoid it, um, and hopefully it continues that way, because I like to live. <laughs> so, But anyway, uh, give me your thoughts. Uh, for those of you who are interested in this kind of subject, uh, what do you think is more than likely to happen? Is there perhaps a scenario you know of or that you feel uh, is likely to happen in the next 20 years that I left off the list? Uh, and other than that, tell me what you have to say. If you have any kind of uh, suggestions or videos you would like me to do on this kind of subject, which I tend to call conspiracy theories or pseudo-entertainment, let me know. I'll be more than happy to do it. Until then, I'll see you next video. Take it easy. Hey guys, welcome to Entertainment Talk Nation. I'm your host, Rob. This video, we're going to delve back into the conspiracy theory category, and this is going to be a throwback video. Uh, I've actually done this one before, and I'm going to be rehashing it here on this channel. This is going to be the top 10 least likely to most likely end of the world scenarios. <laughs> Okay guys, welcome back. So just to let you know, I'm not actually going to be doing this myself right here and right now. I'm going to be re-uploading uh, one of my older videos and kind of touching it up a little bit. So just so you know ahead of time, uh, this video I might mention some events that happened back in October or September, and I may be citing them as recent when at this point, while they're still recent, they're not all that, uh, you know, that recent, I guess, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Uh, but basically, I'm going to, like I said, re-upload this add some pictures to it, and then let you guys listen to it. It's my least likely to most likely uh, end of the world scenarios, and uh, I'm going to let that video run. So just keep in mind, this is an older video. I did this video back, I believe, in October. So if you hear anything or something I'm referring to, just take, just keep that in mind. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. I'm going to go over my top 10 end of the world scenarios from least likely to most likely that could happen within the next 20 years. So here we go. So at number 10, Nibiru. Nibiru. If you haven't heard of Nibiru, Nibiru is the theory that there is a rogue planet that has a 